Adam. Hi. How are you? Hey, how are you? Good, man. What's going on? How you been? Okay, it's kind of a quiet. It's like the real quiet time, fortunately. So good. Yeah, the air conditioner has to be off, so I can't drink hot. Li- oh, you know what I have here? What? Oh yeah, there you go. You need that to. Uh, to... <laughs> man, you know I've never been to Nashville. Oh no. The Nash the Nashville Film Fest. Hmm. You should go. You know, it's programmed. I have to be careful how I say these things, right? It's a great festival, so let me just get that out of the way. Yeah. But, you know, if you go to South by Southwest, is like you're, you may do like every year or two or so, right? You make it there unless you have work, I assume. or uh, right. And you go to like the Dallas International and you're going to a couple of others. You're going to see kind of similar titles. So, you know, it, it does have that. But, what, 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 of course, it's just, you, you know, it has Nashville and the people that run it, which is the real perk there, you know. Right. But you could go to some other festivals and experience a lot of the same titles. I mean, that's great. I mean, that's some beast played there. Right. Um, and I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. With Cameron Nelson. Remember that. With, like with the DP or something. But I always wanted to go check it out. I still yeah. never been to any Memphis either. Well, I haven't been there either. I'm, I'd love to go to that. I hear we'll that's have to, amazing. Yeah, we'll have to synchronize. Yeah, you and I need to definitely do that. Hold on, Sam. Let me put the uh, dog out over here. Pin, oh, let me see the dog. Yeah, let me show you the dog here. You can get a you can get a picture. Oh, that's true. Oh my God, Is that a beagle? Uh, she's got like a border collie mix. Okay. She's a mutt. She's yeah, beautiful. Nine. Those. Are, hi, hey. sweetheart. What's the dog's name? Oh, that's a cute dog. Thanks, man. I'm gonna shut her off. Anyway, otherwise she'll be jumping in the seat with us. Mm-hmm. That would be all right with me. I'm begging for treats. I'm sure I've had dogs on the podcast before. You need uh, to get Michael Tully's dog, Poppy. Oh, I, I don't didn't know even know he had a dog. Man, he has this Instagram feed just of his dog. He Poppy, does? Oh, Chihuahua. Oh, I'll ch- oh, okay. Well, there, <laughs> Poppy's going to be taking a back seat very shortly. Uh-oh. Next month. Oh, yeah? You what? Next month. What do you mean? What do you mean? The, well, they're they're having a baby. Oh yeah! For a minute, I thought you meant something else, like they're getting oh. another dog, or they're. Oh no 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 no! They're oh they're awesome. getting another they're getting somebody else. All right, it's gonna. Oh yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I when I when Jacob, my son, was born, we also had had a dog who's yeah we got a year before, and um, you know they they they're. they're uh, you you know nine out of ten dogs are not gonna have a problem with that. They they're actually it's just another person they can love. So, you know, right? Actually, that dog is still alive. No shit. Yeah, it's a pure breed, and she's fifteen, and she's still still. I mean, she's not in my care. She's with him, one of my one of <laughs> one of my exes, but yeah, she's being treated very 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 well there. So I didn't. Well, that's good. Yeah, as long as the dog's being. Oh yeah, no, it was the right thing to do given the circumstances. I I'm glad. I know she's in really great hands. Good. Yeah. So you're right now. You're in your Dallas home. Uh, in Austin. Oh, you're in Austin. Austin. Wait, yeah. did you relocate there at some point? And I didn't realize that. We, we did uh, about three years ago. Wait a minute, three here. years ago. Yeah, about three years ago we moved here uh, for work. Meg got a job here. Oh, okay. So we moved here, and then, um, but funny enough, now we decided we're going to move back to Dallas. All in right, about well, a month. I can't. So you're actually catching me on the tail end of my my stay here in Austin. Oh, are you sad to go? Or yeah, it's mixed feelings. You know, like on one hand, we'll get to be near our old friends in Dallas, and our both our families are out there. So okay, that's great. Right. Um, and it, we'll save a little money that way. Sure. Yeah. But mixed feelings. But so how, you were there for about three years. Oh wow! You're in Texas. That's all that matters. Yeah, I'm in Texas. I'm in Texas. We need. So I'll still be able to hang out with you when you come for uh, South by. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, you know, I never know at this point if I'll be there. Uh, right. And I actually, w- I was kind of considering pitching a panel, but then I realized I, uh, well, I missed the date. You know, I just it just fell off my radar and then i realized right. hey, i unless i'm committing and i know i'm going to be there and you know if i'm working full time or something i can't go and i mean it's just not worth it to me to go for like a short weekend yeah it's too much you know what i mean i wouldn't yeah, be able it can be i mean my, my thing is i feel like the older i get i hit a threshold of like 
I can't do it anymore. Like I like after three days, yeah, four days, I'm done. I can't do a week or oh, well, I, I sort of steam. oh, well, I'm sort of the other way. I like the longer time mm-hmm. because I can see more stuff and more stuff, but fewer each day. Like or maybe you know, what I mean, like I don't feel as much like I have to pack it in. I That's pref- a good point. Yeah, I mean, I'm not. I've not gone to Sundance or Cannes, for instance. So. So I was at Toronto, where you would feel compelled to see right. a lot of stuff in the course of it. But I, tor- I, t- I don't like to really see more than three films a day. I mean, you know. Me too. I mean, I can't do. I think that's what I mean is I get so burnt out. I'm like, yeah. I can't do. Right. I can't do more than that. Right. And then, like, I guess, like the the socializing after a while, like, it's just so. Packed. That's true. Yeah. I just so maybe I'll take a cue from you and like just do it like four hours a day, five hours a day, and the rest of the day you just chill out. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, that makes sense. Depending on the festival, sometimes I'll go and I I barely see anything because I'm there to I'm sort of podcasting more, right? And so I have to see stuff beforehand, you know. And then I I just because of the timing of it's very hard for me because I'm trying to schedule the films, but also the podcasting. So like this past time at South by this last spring was good be, or winter be, was good because I had actually had seen quite a few of the films before i got there and i realized then i could i had more uh was able to maneuver more and 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 modify my schedule on the fly because it's 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 very unpredictable trying to get people to you know because it's it's just very ahead of time you can you can do it to some degree but it's with some of the publicists but when you're trying to do too many there's so many moving yeah and then you're just missing films because yeah so it's a kind of a mixed bag, you know. And then there's other festivals now where I just didn't like. I went to the Lighthouse International Film Lighthouse. Festival. It's on. Oh, where, where's that? It's in New Jersey. It's on an island, though, off the off the coast. So it's it's. it's oh, you sh- wow, you need to cool. go to that one. I want to check that out. You should what go. It was fantastic. It's in and it's in the uh, early summer, late. Spring. Oh wow! I think it was in June. Yeah, it was okay. fantastic. Uh, you know, I was hanging out with owner. He was showing um, misogynists there. Yeah. And um, I don't want to see that. I'm dying to see that. Yeah, I'm interested in what you'll think of it. It's interesting that film is is most obnoxious in some ways because you know it's, it takes all takes place on the eve of the election, the 2016 right. election, and you know there it's 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 pushy. You know, it's like it, it pushes buttons, and then but the Q and A's. I've seen, I was at the Hamptons, where I saw it at the Hamptons last fall, and then I saw, I ran into him at Montclair, where he showed it, and then yeah. again at Lighthouse, and the audiences, I didn't sit through the Q&As all the time, but the audiences, there were older people from the communities. Right. It wasn't just film industry people, and they really liked Owner, responded to the film very positively, even though it rankled them to some degree. Right. Politi- politically, you know, but they also really yeah. were engaged, and it was interesting to see that. Whereas I think some of his earlier films, like they wouldn't have, they would just probably walked out of Summer of Blood or something like that, you know. Anyway, um, I'm gonna have to take a little time off from some festivals for a little bit because, uh, yeah, um, yeah, I got, I'm trying to ra- ra- wrangle a lot of work right now. I'm going into an expensive period, so I need to do that. Focus on that. I understand, man. You do uh, what you got to do. I was on the New York Film Festival screening committee, so I'm gonna. Well, that's great. So I'm definitely gonna be at that, and I'll and that'll be great. And you know, I'll I'll see if you, there's so many, and then I'll go to the Hamptons probably, and because that's nearby, you know. I still never been to the Hamptons either. Yeah. I want to go to the Hamptons, the Film Fest there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fun. Well, one day the timing will work out, and you'll do it. Yeah. You know, we'll get we'll get we'll figure out how to, it's. There's a bus that goes out there. You know, it's called the Jitney, and it's easy to get to, and that you just need. To figure out lodgings, um, which is like anywhere, you know, it's a little bit tricky, but it always works out. There's always right. a, there's always a bed. It's true. You, you know, always. <laughs> I was aware. I, I was concerned that this pl- the lighthouse is on this island called Long Beach Island, yeah. and it's this really really narrow but really long. It's I think eight miles. Yeah, I think it is like eight miles long. Uh, you, I got to look it up, but it's. It's very narrow from bay to ocean. Yeah. It's like, you know, just like maybe at the widest half a mile or so. I don't know. Anyway, 
and we got we I got put up in this house with because uh, there's no press goes to it, you know. So they just right. they treated me right. really well, right. and they You're put the me up dress. with and they put me up. My friend who had a film there, my friend uh, Jeremy Workman had a documentary called the The World Before Your Feet, which is currently in the the still in festivals, and um, and he we shared a house right on the right like steps from the beach you know oh my gosh yeah it was man. great and the weather That's was great. great yeah the weather was really good <clears throat> and um and we had this little cottage but I, there were like three rooms two of the rooms had t- two twin beds i mean it was just so much space i realized uh, next year i'm going up you, you should definitely come but i'm going to try to go every year yeah, now man. it's so easy to get to it you know I, I figured next year just bring my kid because even if he doesn't go to any of the films, idea. he could just hang out on the beach. Who cares? You know, That's a to... great idea, man. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So, anyway. Man, you just talked me into it. I definitely got to find a way to go. Well, well, subscribe to... You have a long time. You know, you won't just have moved to da- right. back to Dallas. So, you'll, exactly. have a, you'll have like, you know, a good nine, ten months to kind of figure it out. But, yeah, just look it up. And they, the programmer is very good. They, they played... It's a very small festival. You know, it's just very easygoing, and um, you know, I don't know how many features, but not a lot. And um, I went to some shorts, and I didn't really do anything there. I just, yeah, you know, I just sort of did some social media around it. I don't think I even interviewed anybody. I was gonna, I offered to, but it was hard. I was gonna offer to uh, interview the, uh, the you know, the director, and and I'll probably do it like before next year's festival, ahead right. of, ahead of time. So. Anyway, but that that's I'm good. going on and on about it. Um, no, that's good. You just convinced me. Yeah, get on there. Are just get part, on their mailing list. Are you part of the team there? You get a no, I know, right? Yeah, no, get on their mailing list. Check it out. Yeah, it's it's a it's just such a pretty and it's a pretty place and they really take good care of all their guests. It's like that's great. One of those festivals. Good. You know, I like. I mean, those are, are sometimes all too rare. Surprisingly. Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah. But yeah. Well, you know, I think a lot of festivals try to get big. Or to the size where they're really on the map, you know. And who can blame them? But you know, because sure. they're competing for the great film, the titles, you know. And so they kind of have to attract a lot of filmmakers. It's difficult. This festival, uh, you know, that was their biggest, I'd say, challenge was getting people down there. Right. They just didn't get that right. many filmmakers. So, you know, so those who do go, I mean, I mean, if they keep, it's hard because they're kind of off the beaten path. They, you know, it's off an, on an island, which you can drive onto right. from a bridge. It's not like you have to take a ferry. But still, I think it's, it's, get, it's, hard, for, it's hard to get people to go there still, even though it's very close to New York. It's, so I think that's, once they start figuring out how to get people over there, then, the, you know, then of course, yeah. then the, the, the charm part might not be there anymore. But I don't of know if course. they're, I don't know if they're, they've only, I think this was their 10th year. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know it was that young. I thought it was older, I guess. Um, unless I'm mistaken, I think it was their 10th festival. I could, be, yeah. Huh. The fest, the, the Lighthouse Festival. Lighthouse Festival. Le, what's called Lighthouse International. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Throw that international on there, it changes everything. There were. There were international films. You and I are, here, are reuniting here on the podcast. That's right. It was, uh, we got together like three years ago. Yeah. I guess I was just a guess. Mm-hmm. In Queens. It was, it was at the uh, Media Center, IFP Media Center, I think. Yes, that's right. It yeah. was in that cafe or restaurant. That's right. Yeah. I was trying to remember exactly where it was. I remember hanging out in Queens that day. Right? Didn't yeah. we? Yeah. We yeah. hung out in Queens exactly. and then we, I guess we went over there. And then it was took like a, I think it took like almost a year till I put it up. It was, and I can't remember what that was tied to. I think we tried to tie it. In I don't with know. You doing the one with Heather Kafka. Oh yeah, some some beasts. I think you wanted to release both. They kind of like worked in tandem. That's exactly right. I think that's what it was. That's and that's what I ended up doing. And I, I think it was around. I guess I just tried to do something with some beasts. I think was the idea. I think that's what I was trying Let's to do. Go. But it kept. Paul Call was on the episode too. David Call. Is that true? Yeah, I think he was. I think he was. David was. There was an interview with him. Hmm. Oh, we were oh. talking to him about Americana. I think, oh, so. right. It, or his short that he was raising cool. money. F- I think he was raising yeah. money f- doing a Kickstarter, and so he did. It was a super short like conversation, right? I yeah. Th- it was it was like a call, and I'll do occasionally. I'll I do something so. like. Yeah. Yeah. Great short, by the way. Did you see that? The, how it turned out. I think I did. It's great, man. 
it's yeah. really it's really really good. Yeah, I remember he was frustrated with some festivals about getting it into some play. I don't remember. Maybe, yeah, maybe it was it's that classic. It's the classic pull, man. It's trying to get your film out there. Yes, <laughs> you would know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and speaking of which, you are getting yeah. your several uh, several of your works out there here in Brooklyn. Yep. In a matter of days, what what's going on? So Spectacle Theater uh, in Williamsburg has been kind enough to to do this kind of semi retrospective of my work um, for a month. So they're they're showing it from uh, end of August and then like through like the you know middle of September somewhere in there. Uh, but they're showing my most recent feature, Her Wilderness, and they're showing um, my most recent three shorts that I made. From a directorial um, standpoint. Yes, yes. So it, from my directing work. Mm-hmm. Um, this is great. I mean, I've never had anything like that before. I've only had my individual films, you know, screen when they come out at festivals and things like that. But to have it play spectacle is really special because I love that theater and I've always wanted to play there. So it's kind of amazing. How did it come about? So I, so Chris Bell. Oh, yeah. Um, he, he, you know, writes for the playlist occasionally. He's a great filmmaker and he's a good buddy of mine. He, he was the first one that was, I remember telling me more about Spectacle and how his cinema club group, he was showing films there, kind of using their space to host. And, and then, uh, you know, I started noticing that I always thought they did mostly like underground, like repertory films. I didn't know they did as many current films. And so it was kind of through Chris that I learned more about it. And so, I kind of was keeping an eye on their program more and more. Cut to a couple years later, I get, um, I talked to Caroline Gollum, who programs for them along with Steve McFarland, and they approached me about doing a screening of some of my work. And Caroline, I knew from years ago, she directed a film called Feast of Man that I acted in. Okay. Uh, and so that was how I got to know Caroline. And, um, it was a great time on that shoot, but like we, we don't really talk all that often. So it was kind of nice for her to reach out Mm -hmm. be like, you know, people know you as a director or as an actor, but not so much as a director. Right. Um, and then she talked to Steve and they said, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Um, made me very happy. (laughs) So, and it's wonderful. They're putting you up at, they're putting me up at the, at the, at one of the fancy hotels, I guess. Oh, are they? Yeah. No, I think it, I think it's, uh, you know, as far as I know, I'm just hanging out with my buddies. Okay crashing with them They're, they are taking care of me they're taking care of me do you feel like you're more proud of of one or the other in terms of your directing or your acting you know no man i i can't make that distinction um in terms of what i like more or what i'm more proud of i, I can't really do that because to me they're so tied in um because i it all started when i was a kid so i mean so when i was like six years old i was that kid making movies mm-hmm and so, for me, the acting was always part of the filmmaking. The filmmaking was always part of the acting. Okay. They so, were... for me, it's it's always been tied in. Right. Know? All right. So, it was in, they were inextricably bound, in other words. Yeah. They're linked. Yeah. Okay. So, I can't really separate so, the two. Okay. But, I mean, you certainly grow and learn avoided, you know, a lot one from the other. You know? Avoided question. Okay. Just making a <laughs> note here. <laughs> my, my, my answer is, uh, I like both. There's no Sophie's choice here, Adam. I, uh, Oh, you don't have I to would choose. Both. That's yeah. true. You do not have to choose. So. I will say this much though. Um, if yes. this helps at all to uh-huh. me, I haven't, I don't make money off of my film, my films. Like I don't, at this point in my life, at least I'm not a director for hire. I'm not opposed to that idea, but to me, when I make work, I guess there's still kind of a purity to, well, sure. Do that because it has to be something. Right. Uh oh. Make it's like the acting. Wait, say that again. Like that last bit. Again. Say that last bit again. Oh, I was saying there's like a purity to my yeah. to my directing in the sense, and I don't mean like what I make is pure, but I mean like in how I look at filmmaking. Um, there's a purity in that it's got to be personal. It means something to me, and it's you know there are pieces essentially. There are pieces that I just want to make, whereas the acting has now become my full time job. Oh, it has. But yeah, so you're making over the, about over the past two or three years, it's been full time now. Okay, uh, so does it now? Granted, I know it's feast or famine, and sometimes it's like I know I'm in a on a high now, but I know there's always a slump, you know. Yeah, well, um, you know my ex wife, and she she went through this horrible slump just the last. I mean, it's hard to tell because 
she um, is very visible right now because she's like on uh, Luke Cage or what have you. But oh, that's right. she actually hasn't really worked in months, and it's very stressful. And then she just got some job finally. Like she's working, I think, today. But it, it yeah. you know, months go by, and it's you know, it's not it's not a cheap place to live, New York, especially if you're uh, yeah, two kids, and you know, it's a it's a, there's you know, it's very stressful. Um, yes. So I, I understand your the dilemma. Um, I couldn't do it also without you know my partner May. Sure. I mean, like, Her I mean, support. It's like we're in this together, so as a unit. You know, you can if, when one has a slump, the other can support, which sure. is so helpful. Right, you know? right. And so, if the other one works full time, their slump is um, less of an issue. <laughs> it's true. It's totally true. I, although Meg for a while was like freelancing. Um, yeah. Or not, I would say freelance, but she kind of had a, a private practice, so it's like whatever. Okay. Like, right. Yeah. So. Sure. So it's all on her. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the the uh, Spectacle Theater, which is located at one twenty four South Third Street. As you said, in Williamsburg, it's right off Bedford, and you can go and see something for five dollars. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where else you can do that, honestly. It did. That's uh, the amazing part. Yeah, and it's the the retrospective is called "A Fortnight with Frank Mosley." I like that. A fortnight a sa- starts Saturday, August twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. And I'll be there for that screening. I'll be coming in Parthenon uh, for that night. You, okay, just that night, or. Yeah, I'll be coming in just for that first screening uh, to do a and a and just to talk with people about yeah. the work. Right. And it's like one of those places where the the screenings really are the catalyst for the conversation. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I think it's that kind of theater where, you know, the Q&A is really kind of the price of admission. If you So you're going to show your short Parthenon, which I had a chance to see. And, Great. Uh, I'm just reading over the description. And the Casa de Mi Madre. Uh, yeah. Which which I had not I saw of course as well but I had not I'm like wow where did that one come from? That's the Good. one you made in Cuba. Yeah, I made that at the um, this workshop. This uh, uh, it's called Black Factory Cinema, and they have this workshop that they started doing about five ten years ago, where you apply. They they put out a notice on IndieWire. Oh, and basically they take filmmakers from around the world. And basically, they had a um, it's like a ten day workshop program where they bring in a, a famed mentor, somebody of note. And the year I was there was Abbas Karastami. Never heard of which him. Was, right, never heard of Karastami. Yeah. Uh, where is he from? <laughs> hero, my hero. Um, really? That was the thing. When I saw his name was on there, I said, "Well, I gotta apply," even though I thought I didn't stand a chance in hell. I was like, "But I got to do it anyway." And I, I not only did I get in, but my good buddy Cameron Nelson get out of here also got in. Is yeah. that right? We're, yeah, we both we both got in. Did you? Where was uh, that in the in relation to the making of some beasts? No, I, I I mean where was that the year that you got into this? Um, what is it? What would you call it? Oh, a, a school in the timeline class workshop. Yeah, what? it was a workshop. So during that, I would what? say it was probably I, I think some beasts had already been out. Yeah, about okay. maybe eight months, something like that. Okay. Um, in the and then we did this workshop together at the same time. Okay. So how many people in all were in this workshop? 50. There were 50 people. 50 from and, all around the world. Yeah. I mean, it was only 10 days, but it felt like boot camp. Like, yeah. It felt like it was so involved. You get up every day, you eat, live, breathe, you know, movies. And basically, Kurostami is so approachable and open. He just walks around and he goes, here's my, here's my prompt for you. He gives us a theme. And then you have to come back and pitch him an idea that he has to approve before you can make your movie. So every person, all 50 people, made their own short over those 10 days. What, where did you find your madre? <laughs> my madre. That's the madre. The question. Where did I find my madre? Um, so there was this, a lot of, of the other people there in the program, they used non-actors because where this school was located in Cuba was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's like in farmland. Yeah. So they used a lot of farmers into these kind of cinema verite, you know, documentary hybrid pieces. But for me, I was like, look, with my idea, it needs an, an actor. Like, it's kind of about acting in a way. Um, so there was this one day that a bus shuttled in from Havana and they brought in like 20 actors. And I mean, I don't know who any of these people are. It's like, you know, of course not. I, I don't have their IMBD. I can't like look them up. I don't know what's going on. So like, so I see them and they basically go, okay, go find an actor for your, for your film. And so, um, yeah, so I'm standing in the corner. I see this woman and I think, 
Okay, she looks like the part in my head. Like, she could be amazing, but I don't know Spanish. Thankfully, Cameron did. And so I go up to her, and using Cameron as my translator, we essentially pitched her this story. And she has her arms crossed the whole time, and she's just staring at me, like, stoically. Like, she's not blinking yet. She's not looking mm -hmm. at me, not reacting. And I'm, like, jumping around, like, gesticulating, right. you know, wildly. And Cameron's trying to mimic me and really trying to, you know, bring the heat. You Enthusiasm. Know, for this, for the, yeah, for this for this pitch here. Well, we end the pitch, and I'm like, and then the last line is, bah. Like, I say, like, the punchline. Cameron says it, and, like, she still doesn't say anything. Like she's just like staring at us, mm -hmm. and I look at Cameron. I'm like, like we fucked this up. Like this is she's yeah. not going to do it. And as I'm looking at him, she's reaching over with both hands and she takes my head in her hands and she kisses me on the lips. And when she leans back, she has tears in her eyes, and she basically says, "I got to do the movie." It's an amazing story. You're getting choked it's up right an, now. It's an amazing story, and honestly, I say this with no hyperbole. But that trip, that trip to Cuba and making that film in 10 days and the, the friendships I made with all these people, um, this is one of the best experiences of my life, hands down. Yeah, you got, you're got getting all emotional. Um, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's a great story. I'm glad I asked about it. Uh, that one's called Casa de Mi Madre. Yeah. And it, for that intense story you just described, it, it results in a 12-minute film. It's pretty... Yeah. But, yeah. you know, that's a great story. And, and Keir Stami, I guess he must have, you know, passed away not too long after that. He, he did, Adam. He, he died about six months oh, after no. the workshop. Wow. And, and you can imagine when that news broke, our, all 50 of us, we have a private uh, oh. Facebook group. Oh, wow. And so we would write each other and we're like, oh, my God, did you hear the news? Yeah. And so we all feel so um, bound by that experience and the thing is, is that everybody helped each other make those movies right you know and so like i each one of us would work on at least five films over the course of 10 days you know? right like cameron cameron shot mine and produced mine you know and i produced his and so everybody's kind of scratched each other's backs to get it done you know it's fantastic yeah it really was special i'm glad you saw that i, I didn't realize you hadn't seen that actually i don't think so yeah I think yeah. that was my first time seeing it. I, I I don't. I did. You know, I had to watch a hundred shorts for the New York Film Festival. <laughs> right. So I I was, but I when I saw it, I was like, oh great. You know, yeah, yeah. it was a very good. It was a great short. Uh, and then uh, your uh, the last of your shorts is Spider Veins, right? Yeah, and that one of the trio is kind of the oldest mm -hmm. um, of them. Uh, Though not very old. I, what was that? Though not not very old, it was, no, no, it was not 2016. Old, the, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, but of the three, I guess. But yeah, it's interesting. They all, even though you know, it takes place in Dallas, and then you know, Parthenon's in New York, and then obviously Costumi Madras Cuba. Like to me, they all kind of started to form a loose trilogy, which I realized, which was all about these kind of these women trying to define themselves through performance. Mm -hmm. like like how they actually use the idea these characters use the idea of performance um in a given space mm -hmm. to, to to reveal something of themselves that otherwise they wouldn't um and so i noticed these themes that were in my work and then i realized it was coming out and so those three films to me kind of formed a little a trio mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. also so, you made them i made them <laughs> I did make There's them. that part of the trilogy as well. Yeah, that is true. But you know, <laughs> sometimes you make a movie and it's like you have, you know, each film can be totally different thematically. But to me, I guess I sat back and I looked at these three and I'm like, oh, like at their core, they're about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Like all they're like, even though they're in different places and the story's different, it's really about the same thing. I understand. Yeah. Um, and then her wilderness uh, is the um, I guess you could call it a a, a feature. It's over an hour, it's, yeah, but it's just a lean barely. Feature. It's a lean. It's kind of in that wave of new features that are coming back. You know, like Ricky D. Ambrose's new feature, and I just there's a lot of other. I just hung out with him yesterday. Oh, good. how is he? I haven't seen him. Before. I didn't know him. I mean, he's got a feature coming out in a few days. Uh oh. So that's the one I was talking about. Notes on an appearance. Yeah, I did. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, was it you that put, mentioned that? 
to me. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe anyway, I did. But anyway, yeah, I, the I point is, is I, I was, do you know Dan Salit? Yeah. He, so I was on the, the, on the, the set of his film yesterday. Nice. He was shooting his last day. 14. Hmm? 14, right? It's 14. Oh, I didn't even, I, 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 I'm embarrassed to say I didn't even realize he had a title for it. I didn't. No, maybe he, maybe he didn't say anything, you know? Well, I mean, I was out of the, uh, uh, you know, we hadn't been in touch for a little while, and um, he was looking for some extras, and I, I don't do a lot of extra stuff, you know. I, right. Uh, I, te- I just find it's hard to schedule a, a day like that, and um, it's a lot of, you know, a lot of usually time for, for doing very little, but, um, you know, he, I really like his work. You know, I mean, his. I loved. I loved his film he did with Tally, the unspeak, uh, unspeakable act. Yeah, no, that was a brilliant film. It was my introduction to his yeah. work. I've seen two of his other films, uh, you know, subsequently. But and she's in. She, she you know, she's in this film. She's, she's right. the, one of the two lead actors in this. So we spent the day. That was nice. And um, you know, it all took place in it. This last. Uh, this scene was shot it, all in a funeral home. So we spent the yeah. entire day in this funeral home yesterday, and uh, it was cool. I just wanted to sort of experience. I think that the draw for me is, well, I'm willing to still do that kind of thing. It has to. It depends on who the filmmaker is, of course, because it's like I just uh, want to experience what it is to be on that set and just watch this filmmaker working. And I did it right. with Ira Sachs, an owner, of course. I was in the film, but like uh, one or two other people and because I'm, I'm and i'm watching how they how they work and it's it's very informative as well as exciting to watch certain filmmakers but i learn also by yeah. watching because i'm actually you know i kind of gearing up towards eventually towards doing something like that and i have a you know a, a off off topic but i have a short documentary that i'm preparing right now but uh that's awesome yeah that's great Adam. but and i, I want to see it oh yeah yeah well i mean i put an ad up uh, on Craigslist for particular people I'm looking for, even though it's a documentary for subjects, uh, to talk about a particular experience, a shared experience. And I've been in that filtering process. And I'll probably have to put the ad up again because it's already been about a month because I, you know, I thought it would be a little easier to find the people I need, but uh, it's taking a while. Right. But once I have it, it I think it'll move fast because it's just, just hearing people's stories. That's all it's going to be. That's great. It's exciting, and then um, yeah, and then I have a, a screenplay which I'll tell you about when I if I see you in Brooklyn, which I assume I will. But and I'm not direct, I have no plans on directing this. This this would I wouldn't be able to do it. But um, it would be still great, exciting to be on on a set like that and see something you know that I've written made. I that's mean, that's, great. Man. That's a big goal. Yeah, I, I don't have a title for it yet. It's too. I haven't been able to figure it out since it's my first real screenplay. I'm struggling a little. You know, it's a little difficult. I was hoping to have a first draft done by the time my kid comes home from summer camp. Right. But no it's such. I don't think it'll get there that quick. But yeah. but, uh, but it's I I it's hard. I just have so little. Uh, it's it's in the formatting and the you know it's like I just it's I'm just trying to figure out how you do it. Um, yeah. You know, so it's a it's a challenge. But I have. And then I realized, oh, I have to go back and fix this part of the story because I changed my mind about certain decisions. I, I know you must know what that, that's about. Totally. Where totally. You, you're, you know, all of a sudden, mm, this no longer makes sense to have this person meet, come and meet this person here. They need to go to their place and meet them. Just right. like something like that. And then you got to go back and rewrite the scene because it just does no longer make sense in the way you originally conceived of it. So exactly. Yeah. You know, it's a tricky, it's a game. <laughs> it's a game. Yeah. And it's gratifying because you're figuring these things out, but then you got to apply them to the script itself. Yeah. So it's, can you give me just, just a hint of what it's about? Like just like a, t- Oh no, I'm happy to. to. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy yeah. to actually, cause I, 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 do, I actually think you would be helpful too. Also. Great, man. I mean, I can't wait to, to see to see this or to read it. You know, either one. But yeah, it's exciting. Keep me honest. Keep me. You know, just. I will. I'll be brutal when I when I. Uh, yeah. 
you know. Yeah, yeah, no. And you're ready I, down the road. Yeah. Well, I just. Notes, you know. Now, is that going to be screening when you're up here? For Wilderness? Yeah. So there, No, so no, I know. I wonder if Ricky's filmed too. Oh, I don't know, actually. Because uh, I think that's opening on the. I think he said it was. Because I really just met him. I think it's opening on the 17th. So. Nice. I mean, you should, man, his shorts, I've always been a fan of, and his feature is like kind of a culmination to me. It feels like of his shorts. But uh, yeah, I mean, you should definitely see it if you haven't. It's really wonderful. Okay. I'll try to get in there, but it might be, and if it's a one-week run, the last day could be the day you're starting yours. No, yours oh, starts yeah. on the 25th. Scratch that. Yeah. Scratch that. Okay. Yeah, unless he's doing a two-week run or something, mm. which is unlikely. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, her, her wilderness there, um, I think they're only showing my, my shorts um once or twice in the block but they're showing yeah. my feature i think the full month at spectacle right um, and it's cool to have that screening because that i mean that's that feature um the last time it played in new york was through kinescope which is now one of its distributors it's on fandor and it's on kinescope but uh kinescope did like a screening at the new school and that yeah. was back in like 2015 i remember yeah when yeah you, when you were doing something with when you were doing something with yeah when pablo uh screen yeah. that and he's he's done the podcast a couple of times yeah he's a great guy but uh yeah so i'm excited they're showing you know the feature so more people can see it great yeah and, and so where what is the appeal of experimental experimental film because it seems like essentially these are works of, of experimentalism yeah um i mean that's a with good the question. form with narrative I, yeah i don't always really um think about that like going in like i'm gonna make an experimental film it's more like for me i i love narrative but my thing is that i like narrative that's done in a way that feels different or or takes some turns and curves that we don't see coming or structurally i'm a big structuralist in terms of like what can you do to upheave expectations but to bring the themes together more because sometimes if it's a if it's a high concept piece then your themes are really the stars of the movie oh, the, I say sometimes the themes in, are the me, stars at least with experimental films that yeah. I make the themes are the stars of the film right. it's not the the roles or the plot um, but it's about the ideas that come to the surface mm -hmm. you know and uh, so I think that's why I like it because in, in some ways they're kind of like brush strokes you know, films, because you're not worried about the A to B to C to D. It's more about how can I just connect these things visually. Mm -hmm. I just, for me, it's like it's a way to do these kind of brush strokes of, of motifs and almost like tone poems, you know? So yeah. it's like writing, to write different writing poetry than it is a short story or something like that, you mm -hmm. know? Um, just trying to express these ideas. Well, I hope they do a good job. I hope the tickets are starting to sell for them, these uh, screens. Thanks. Yeah. You, you bet. So how long are you going to be in New York then? Uh, I'm only going to be in New York for that weekend. Okay. Uh, so I'll be there through the, the Friday through Sunday, the 24th through the 26th. Uh -huh. um, so it's a pretty quick trip just right. for that. Yeah. Um, but you're going to be doing Q&As just for that first night? Or yeah, just for that first weekend. I'll the whole weekend? So the next day too? Saturday? And I think it's just, I think it's just screening once a week. Like oh, I see. Weekend. Yeah, so I'll be there just for that first weekend, that okay. day. I see. Oh, for Saturday, in other words. Right. I got, oh, I got it now. I see. Yeah, right. Saturday, August 25th. Yeah, right, so, so let I'll me, be there for that. Okay, so let me let me rephrase then so we have a an accurate and uh, clear phrase about it. Frank, you will be here in uh, Brooklyn at the uh, Spectacle to do uh, Q&As and meet your audience. <laughs> On Saturday, August 25th. Uh, again, they'll be showing all four of these films we've been talking about. Parthenon, Casa de Mi Madre, Spider Veins, and Her Wilderness. Yep, that's right. Yeah. i got to make sure it's in my calendar. Yeah, I'd be, uh, I'm excited to see them all on the big screen. Just kind of back to back will be an interesting, uh, interesting experience. I bet. And are you letting your, all your friends in Brooklyn know? Or yeah, in New York? I'm about to do a, a, a blast, okay. uh, like a Facebook event page, and uh, I know Spectacle's been sending some things out, some newsletters and things like that. Great. 
Yeah. Yeah. But we got to tell everybody, come on down to the spectacle and come see Frank Mosley while you're in town. That'd be wonderful. That'd be wonderful to see everybody. I'm, I'm excited to see what people think of this. It was nice and spectacle to do this because they, as they kind of said, I think in the program notes, they're like, you know, people know you mainly as what you do, which is I act. So I think just to maybe show a different side of me. Absolutely. Nice to do for change, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's fantastic. Yeah. You're it's, in, are you in any of these though? I'm as not a, in any of them. Actually. You're not? I thought I remembered no. you in one of them, but I guess something. No, I, I've acted in stuff on my own before, but honestly, right. I don't. I'm not the biggest fan. Oh, you know what it is? I remember. Acting in my own stuff. I remember the actor, I think uh, in a couple of them at first, there's a sl- very, very slight resemblance. That's what it is. And so oh, then I said, oh, well, that's great. not Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not me. No, I, for whatever reason, I like that separation. Um, you know, act for other people and sure. with mine, you know, give opportunities to friends or just, you know. Right. That way you can get a full picture. You're totally focused on what you're doing. Oh, absolutely. I think it takes another skill set to do both. Absolutely. I don't know why. Yeah. I, I'm not there yet. I don't think I'm there yet. Um, so I'm working on that. And it may just not be for everybody. It doesn't have yeah. to be, you know? Yeah, it's true. I, I, you know, you may just want to be totally... Because as a d- director, you may just want to totally be immersed completely, 100%. And that is gratifying. And so why compromise that? You know, exactly. Unless you exactly. Want to. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. All right. Excellent. All right. So uh, again, come down to Spectacle Theater in in Williamsburg, but you can check out right now spectacletheater.com and then you can see uh on the homepage there is a link for the but we'll put the we'll put the link up on the on the uh, show description and everything Great. else and I'll Thanks, I'll be plugging away for you. Don't worry. I appreciate it, man. Well, I hope to see you. Uh, oh, definitely. We'll yeah, figure it out. If you can't make the screening, I'll see you sometime in, you know, that weekend. Or yes, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You can count on it. We'll probably, I'm sure I'll, I'll be there with a few buddies going out afterwards. You can always meet up with us then. Or I would love it. Yeah, totally. Let's Great. make it work out. And I'm just trying to see what, let's see. Oh, I'm on the wrong day here. It's blushed. Okay. I'm, I'm still here. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, like I say, we'll figure it out one way or the other. It's not going to be a problem. I'll definitely see you while you're here. Perfect. Awesome, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this. Man. Sure, it was a pleasure. This oh. is great, man. All right, I'll thanks see you in a, for doing see this. In a few, Take care, man. You too. See you in a few days.